Hello, and welcome to Gatherverse News Unscripted. I'm Lisa Bernard, and I'll be your host on Wednesdays and Thursdays. Today, we'll have your top tech headlines, and we'll also pre present our first Pioneer Profile. Every Wednesday, we will take an in-depth look at someone who is an influential leader in Web3. Today's show is brought to you by How Women Lead. How Women Lead is working to redefine female leadership by elevating women to corporate boards, making venture capital investing accessible through How Women Invest, and supporting social impact philanthropy through How Women Give. In a moment, we will get to our pioneer profile, where we will introduce you to Amy Lemire. Amy was one of the few women working in engineering, in tech, in the early 2000s. And over time, Amy decided she wanted to help other women who were struggling in the male-dominated field. So she joined the WXR Fund, and now she helps to fund female entrepreneurs. But first, we will introduce you to Sam Kamani. Sam joins me today to talk about the top tech headlines. Sam is a serial entrepreneur, an Amazon best-selling author, and a podcaster, and an expert in all things Web3. Thank you, Sam, for joining us. I want to start with Pepe the meme coin and its meteoric rise. Who is Pepe and what is going on here, Sam? Lisa, first of all, thank you so much for inviting me to the show. It is a pleasure to be here and such an amazing work that you guys are doing, um, helping uh, women entrepreneurs, because I do think that when they succeed, everyone succeeds. Um, now, let's get into the news and what's happening in, in the world of Web3. So... Pepe is one of the most recent meme coins, just like Dogecoin. You might have seen Elon Musk talking about Dogecoin often on Twitter and things like that. So uh, what is the purpose of meme coin? There is no purpose. It's just made for, um, for some laughs. But what is different is that so far, it seems like Pepe grew on its own um, and it was an organic thing. Um, they weren't that many because what generally happens with sort of these sort of meme coins and things like that um there are some people who go and hire some influencers and those influencers talk about it but before they talk about it they are already purchased and then everyone they sell out when other people are buying and and then everyone is just left in dust they've made their money and they run away G generally this is what it is it is pretty much like a scam a, a lot of the times but what seems to have happened with pepe is that it um it encapsulates and it captures some of this sort of the the web three um web three culture because it's just like like a meme or a cartoon that's that's being used by by all sorts of people from in the left and the right and um in politics in around the world globally so it was a globally recognizable meme that they just someone took and some anonymous people took and created into a meme coin and it wasn't given out to influencers first it was it had its own organic community and it grew on its own initially so people think that this is like a coin for their community and people are just having some some fun at the moment it, that's what it seems like no one knows who its founder is like i mean pepe the coin not pepe the meme <laughs> so that's um okay yeah so that's what is going on at the moment uh, how long it will last no one knows um will it this coin crash and burn <laughs> no no one knows um i generally don't invest personally myself in meme coins and that's why this is not investment advice um just do your own research and but what has happened is that it has captured um a large part of um interest of the of the meme culture or, or people who are into that sort of meme culture that that's what is going on it certainly did it jumped what 200 percent or something uh, so quickly. Let's turn our attention mm -hmm. to Jeffrey Hinton, who has been referred to as the godfather of AI. He just announced that he is retiring from Google, he says, so that he can now freely speak out against some of his concern with some of his concerns about AI. Why do you think this is significant? And, and what do you think he'll say that we should all be concerned about? 
There are so many things to be concerned about with AI. We still don't completely understand the implications of AI and how it's going to change human society. Um, and most people in the world don't realize how fast AI moves. So say, for example, um, how how do you learn or how do I learn or, or how does any human learn? It's basically we read or we talk to people or we uh, learn by doing and one person learns at just at the speed of one person. Whereas, whereas with AI, you can think about it that AI is like a collection of, let's just say for this example, collection of 10,000 people that AI has that much knowledge. But when any one of these 10,000 people learns one thing, AI learns that. Now multiply that by a million or a billion. So it is learning and developing so, so, so much faster that very soon um, it's possible that AI will have... Um, more intelligence and processing ability than the whole entire human race <laughs> collectively together, not more than one human being per se. So um, people don't realize how exponentially fast AI is, is developing. And um, right now we have nothing to worry about because how AI works is by statistical probability. So when you ask ChatGPT something, it does not understand that, but it just understands statistically what word should come after the previous word. And that's how it's laying out things. But because it is so good at doing those sort of things that people can use its ability for for negative things or for nefarious purposes. So, um, so yes, there is a lot to be careful about, but we still don't understand the full implications of where it's going to go and where it's going to lead to. So that, that's what he's probably going to warn, warn us about. Well, yes, thank you. I'm sure that he will, um, in the coming weeks, be asked more and more questions about it. And perhaps it's comforting to have such an expert who uh, is on top of it and is, 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 is asking for some caution. Sam, thank you so much. Thank you so much for being with us and uh, hope to see you soon. Yeah, thank you, thank so you for inviting me. Cheers. Okay, our pleasure. And now let's turn to our pioneer profile. Each of these people who will introduce you to on Wednesdays is someone who is doing cutting edge work in their field. But not only that, these are people who are also mindful of the human consequences of technology. And here is Amy Lemire. We chose Amy to represent the push for the humanity first standard of equality in Web3. We are speaking with Amy Lemire for Gatherverse News. Amy is a managing partner in the WXR Fund. Her fund invests in what she calls the two greatest opportunities of our time, the next wave of computing and female entrepreneurs. Amy, to start, tell us about your early career and what it was like to be a woman in tech in the early 2000s. I started at a company called Akamai Technologies. So that company helped to build and scale the internet. And at the time, it was this new way of connecting people and sharing information. Amazingly inspiring. But definitely very few women in the space. And if they were, they were in positions in HR or marketing or finance. I was in engineering. You know, the only female in the room kind of frequent moments. What I experienced then is why I do what I do today, which is to be that beacon, be that example, be that inspiration for women that think that they want to do something like what, what, I, what I've done in my career. There was a moment, a moment where you tried a new piece of technology mm -hmm. that changed your life and got you to where you are now. Tell us about that. For sure. So I worked for Akamai for a very long time, 16 years. And for most of that time, I was doing corporate development, um, mergers and acquisitions. We were at CES, which is one of the major computing technology expos in the United States, probably in the world. And we were doing diligence on a cybersecurity company. Cybersecurity was very hot. It's still very important, but you're fighting an enemy. And what, why I joined Akamai was to 
to help people communicate together, right? How does, how does that happen? So I saw virtual rea reality headsets. It was the 2016, the Rift and the Vive had just come out. And I thought, that's it. Like, it's early, but that's the next wave of computing. That's the way that we're going to communicate with each other. That's what's going to transform businesses. This concept of a more fluid um, digital and uh, physical experience that has immersion and presence and, and empathy built in. And you then took your interest in that and your interest in mentoring women to your next step. So at about the same time, uh, WXR, which stands for Women in XR, it was a, a movement that was created by three women. And they ultimately created an accelerator to enable women that were starting companies in XR um, to support them in their growth. And through the course of the year, Martina Welkoff, the other managing partner of WXR Fund, we had a discussion about we should actually take this to the next level and support these women with dollars. And were there many women coming with their pitches to you with business ideas? Yes. And that was, the accelerator was really the proof point for that, mm. right? Are there enough women building companies in the metaverse that are you know, gender diverse co-founding teams that are ready to make a mark on this new computing paradigm. And what are some of the companies you've invested in that these women have founded and are running? So we have 14 companies in our portfolio and they're across a variety of industries, um, retail, uh, healthcare, education, um, wellness, remote productivity, uh, real estate. Uh, what's interesting to me and what has been interesting is to see the types of companies that are founded by women versus the types of companies maybe that are founded by men. And not just because of who we've invested in, but all of the hundreds, like thousands, of pitch decks that we've seen. And definitely you'll see female-founded companies looking at how do we connect, how do we heal, how do we support companies that are in those sorts of spaces. Um, versus uh, male-founded companies tend to be very um, building out platforms or tool or maybe even hardware intensive. What challenges have you found or obstacles have you encountered? Uh, raising the fund was certainly a challenge. Mm -hmm. um, we closed our first uh, round of funding and made our first investments at the very end of 2019. So that was right before the global pandemic. And um, so, so not only was the pandemic a challenge, but also we were first time fund managers and we're women. Um, and we didn't have this network of male or even high net worth individuals, right? But most, most money, it traditionally venture fund money does come from men. And then we were in this emerging technology that we had to explain and not everybody believed in. And we were investing in right. women that not everyone believed in, right? And we, right. we were doing it not because it's good social or impact, right? Or philanthropy, mm -hmm. but because there are studies that say that women are successful and even more successful than men in creating businesses. So it was, it was really a stressful time, but we, but we did it. We raised a fund, we've invested in companies, and we're going to continue to support them. In terms of people of color, um, the challenges they face are also extreme. We think about that a lot, and not only diversity in terms of people of color, but even beyond that, in terms of um, accessibility, physical accessibility, mm -hmm. or auditory, or visual, or mm -hmm. uh, age, or size. I mean, um, there's just such a broad definition of inclusion and diversity and equality and particularly for something like the metaverse something that's game changing as this sort of technology we feel that it's important that diversity at its maximum can be reached but we started with women in the hopes that women by their very nature would also be more inclusive i think the key is that we need to start now while the technology is young. While, while the foundation of the metaverse is being built, now is the time to really make sure that there's a set of inclusionary practices that are, are helping um, everyone be welcome 
in this to create and build and innovate in this space. Better to do it during the foundation than trying to fix it later. Right. Thank you for speaking with us My for Gatherverse News today. Thank you. And that was Amy Lemire with the WXR Fund. We'd like to build out our reporting by learning about the things you're interested in. Please share your story ideas with us. We'll drop a link in the comments section of the live feed. And also, you can find a place to share with us on the gatherverse.org slash news page. Tell us what you'd like us to explore on your behalf. On tomorrow's show, I will be speaking with Sandy Carter, who is the COO of Unstoppable Domains. Sandy will join us to explain what we need to know about our digital identity, and she'll help us to demystify Web3 and help explain to us some of the ter terminology that you might come across. So that's tomorrow. Thank you again to today's sponsor for our show, How Women Lead along with their sister organization, How Women Invest. How Women Lead is working to change the landscape for women leaders and investors. Women are done waiting for a seat at the table of power and influence. Through the new table campaign, How Women Lead is inviting 10,000 female leaders to take their seat, commit to invest in venture capital, support women-founded companies, and disrupt the venture capital landscape. We would also like to thank the lead ambassador for the new table campaign and the first investor in the How Women Invest Fund, Lada Seti. If you'd like to sponsor us yourself in the future, please get in touch through the Gatherverse News sponsorship page. And that is it for today. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope I'll see you again tomorrow right here at the exact same time, which is 12 noon Pacific Standard Time. Thank you. Have a great day.